Yeah, it's really uh, an honor to be here. And I just want to say to the graduates, congratulations. You know, you made it. It's your special day. You made it through COVID. You got the diploma. Congratulations. And uh, one thing, please thank your family and friends and so on that supported you to get to this point because they helped you a lot. Um, anyway, as uh, you know, Professor Ledger said, I'm a proud Golden Gopher. I graduated in 1989 with my BSWE from this department. And uh, you know, I realize 1989, it was a long time ago. It's long before most of you were born. And uh, you know, what happened in 1989? Well. In 1989, the ECE building was brand new. It wasn't called Keller Hall at that point. And uh, Washington Avenue was a busy thoroughfare. There was no light rail. And uh, in 1989, there was no internet. There was no GPS. There was no Google Maps. There was no chat GPT. Uh, back then, you had to have a paper map. You had to use your own memory to look up articles in the stacks. You had to copy them with the photocopier. Press it down hard. All right. Most of you have no idea what I'm talking about. All the parents know what I'm talking about. So anyway, you may be thinking uh, to yourself, and I would if I were you, someone as old as me, I got no hair, I graduated over three decades ago, what can he teach me? Hasn't the world changed too much? What can he teach me in 2023? Well, that's a really good question. You know, that's the question you should ask. And, and I, if I'm honest, I don't know what my graduation speaker said, so I don't remember. <laughs> but I hope, I hope that you will find some value in what I have to say. So, all right, it's 2023, what do we do? What would make a good commencement speech to a graduates of an ECE department? So, well, let's use some AI, all right? And I did. So I typed it in the chat GPT and I got, <laughs> and so, you know. So, and, and, and it was good, I, I got this advice, so I want to read it for you. <laughs> Step one, congratulate you. Second two, or uh, two, point out your unique skill set. <laughs> Emphasize your responsibility to shape the future. Collaborate with others, communicate effectively, stay curious, never stop learning. That's, that's what it gave me, what, what do you think? <laughs> And, you know, these are reasonable things to say. They represent conventional wisdom. Uh, it's called from thousands of uh, speeches similar to this on the internet. It's put together, you know, for me, for you. But I tell you what, it's of almost no value. It's not valuable. And, you know, this is what I think of that, right? This is, it's, it's really not that valuable, and you know why? Because any of you could have asked the same question, got the same answer without coming here today. You didn't need me to tell you that. So such wisdom is common and easy to obtain and it's true, but it's not valuable. But what I want to do is add value for you today in this ceremony. So that gets to my central message for you newly minted ECE graduates. You all need to strive to add value in your career. Value is what gets rewarded. Value is how you get promoted. Value moves the world, okay? But how do you do that? Not so simple. I want to give you two ideas for what to do. The first idea is the idea of do differently. Do differently. What it means is, once you have mastered or nearly mastered the basics of a skill or an area of knowledge, you ask yourself, what can I do differently? And don't wait to be told. Don't wait for your manager to tell you. It's your responsibility. So that's one, do differently. But what? What exactly should I do differently? Lots of things you could do differently, infinite things you could do differently. What you do is you look for the white space, the white space. White space, white space is unmet need that you can uniquely serve. Unmet need is everywhere all the time, but it takes practice to see it, and it takes courage to go fill it. And I hope you can see this advice is timeless. It will work for you as it works for me. It was true in 89, it's true in, it's true in 2023. So do differently, 
by filling the white space to add value. So that's been my approach throughout my career. And uh, let me try to give you a few examples just to kind of illustrate it. So after I got my bachelor's degree from this fine institution, by the way, I took many classes in this very room, you know, projecting up here. Um, I went to the University of Arizona, I got my PhD. When I finished school, my wife and I had the good fortune to return to Minnesota and started at a company called BTC Incorporated. And uh, we both graduated from the U. We were thrilled to get back, my wife and I. So BTC is, a, is in Bloomington, next to the Mall of America. It's about 10 miles south of here. It's a small, privately held semiconductor company, made their own products, fabbed their own wafers, developed their own technology, competed with the big guys. So BTC added value by occupying white space of specialized analog chips for hard disk drives. And it was great. And I got in because I was an expert in bipolar transistors, which they needed. But there was one small problem that I found out real fast. I learned very quickly that my knowledge from school had very little relationship to what the company needed. Okay? So, uh, spoiler alert for all of you, you're going to find out the same thing. Okay? So, sounds bad, but I had enough to get in and the ability, my ability to fill the white space and my desire to add value for the company set me on my way. So anyway, at BTC, we were challenged to add value by finding new ways to fill a legacy wafer fab. Upgrading semiconductor process equipment, it's unbelievably expensive. It's billions of dollars are required to build something state of the art today. Asian countries have done this for many decades. The US has not, certainly hasn't done it, didn't do it back then. So we did differently by filling the white space available to us. We transformed the business out of disk drive chips into a foundry, into power management chips, high voltage, automotive, all the while growing the business, polar semiconductors still thriving here in Minnesota. In 2018, I was fortunate to become president of Canamax FMT, which is a small startup instrumentation company in White Bear Lake. It's northeast of here, about 15 miles. Canamax FMT adds value to nanoparticle detection by using aerosol science techniques. These were pioneered right here at the U of M. And so for me to add value to that company, I needed to fill the white space in the company and, and you know, grow my skill set by owning the P&L, running the sales, marketing, finance, HR, operations, legal, basically everything but engineering. So the company's still doing well today. And then in 2021, I joined Skywater Technology. It's also in Bloomington, also a semiconductor wafer fab. So a fun fact you may not know is that both Skywater and Polar Semiconductor are originally part of the control data empire from long time ago. And they're still there going strong. And so it dates all the way back to the 60s. And at Skywater, I'm privileged, privileged to serve as the chief operating officer and chief technology officer with nearly 700 passionate people reporting to me. So Skywater, Skywater adds value for our customers by co-creating new technology, bringing it into production in the same factory. We call it technology as a service business model. Anyway, technology as a service model for technology acceleration into production is unique. That's the white space Skywater occupies. And our do differently here is crucial for our country as we try to bring semiconductor manufacturing back from Asia uh, after it was invented here many years ago. And the CHIPS Act can help accelerate that trend. So anyway, that's a little bit about my career trajectory and what I mean by do differently in white space. So I spent my entire career in high tech, mostly in semiconductors right here in Minnesota. I'm proud to have played a role in keeping these high value high tech jobs in our great state. And I'm grateful for the education and learning from the ECE department right here that started me on my way. So, enough about me. Let me come back to my message for you, which is to add value by finding your white space and doing differently. Your future success with your shiny new ECE degree will come down to whether you can add value for your employer, for the investors, for society. You know, good and bad, but you're not going to be given homework assignments with problems to solve, to turn in by a certain date, to be graded by a TA. You will not receive a letter grade. It's not going to happen. Not anymore. 
unless you're going to grad school, and then it will. <laughs> so anyway, you need to find an entry point into your new company. You need to learn the ropes. You need to start to contribute. And then you find some white space and challenge yourself to do differently so you can start adding value. So let me give you an ex example. Maybe this will uh, help you understand. So let's say you're a new engineer on the job. Your new company has some successful products, has some legacy systems. Uh, you realize there's no searchable database of product attributes that you can access via mobile. There's inefficiencies. You say, ah, I see white space. I see white space. Something you can do differently with your skills with your ECE degree. You can go make a database, you can make an app, you can show people how to use it. All of a sudden the company's more efficient, you train people how to use it, and you've just added value, and you're on your way, and you're on your way in your career. Your story will be different, every one of you will have a different situation, but it's the same each time. Figure out what's going on, figure out what you can do different, look for the white space. Just a thought about where to work and who to work for. You should seek out, my advice to you is to seek out people and companies who encourage you to do differently because they will be the leaders, they will be the winners in the future. It'll be more exciting for you. You will learn and grow more quickly. And uh, conversely, you know, you, if you don't see that, you should run. You need to find managers who think this way and challenge you to grow. But if your company isn't doing that and your manager isn't doing that, Find another manager. Find another company. I'm serious. Anyway, back to ChatGPT. <laughs> so what I hope is that I have done differently than the ChatGPT formula. And I hope that I move to the white space of providing some real life examples and some principles that you can understand and that you can connect with. And I hope sincerely that I have added some value to your commencement as a result. All right, congratulations, CCE graduates, and rah, rah, rah for Skyamah. <laughs>